Hello, this video is going to be about FI and, and uh, show a few ways uh, how you can examine it and investigate it for yourself using Excel. But uh, FI is a number, it's a proportion, it's called the golden mean, the golden number or the divine proportion. And you'll see, well, well once you come to recognize FI, you'll see that it's everywhere in nature and for instance, uh, sunflowers. Now, um, not just the number of petals, but even the arrangement of the seeds in, in the center of the sunflower is based on this golden number. Now a few uh, other examples. Uh, where are we? Okay, um, okay, so not just sunflowers, you're going to see it in all sorts of uh, plants, in animals uh, such as uh, seashells. Uh, even the uh, spirals of goats of horns, but um, all sorts of, well, again, plants. But even so, on the galactic scale, so at pitch, you know, we see the spirals of galaxies very often have this um, fire now. Even so, here in the bottom corner, the way that leaves will arrange themselves is done at this very particular ratio, and it's um, so it's not only beautiful, but it's also very practical, so that the shadow of, of a leaf will not a leaf will not cast a shadow on another leaf, but so we see it in uh, tornadoes, uh, not sorry, not tornadoes, hurricanes, cyclones, typhoons, and it's uh, well, also it's it's literally everywhere. Uh, pine cones, artichokes, pineapples. It's it's a beautiful number. It's everywhere in nature, and it's uh, we can sort of see it in some beautiful uh, patterns. And so from the macro to the micro, phi is a very important number and for some reason uh, we're not taught about it and certain gatekeepers such as Keith Devlin will go out of their way to uh, either minimise it or to try to totally um, uh, debunk it, but it, phi is undebunkable. Now, uh, the, the excuses they use to try and minimise phi because uh, phi is a transcendental number, that means it goes on forever and ever and ever. And so those uh, reasons that are often used would also e exclude pi. So if if phi is unimportant, then so is pi, and then everything falls apart. But uh, so shells and pine cones, as you can see here, but also phi. So we have phi, or there's another version of a symbol, but Phi as a number is 1.618033987, etc. And it goes on for infinity. It's, it's a transcendental number just like pi. But unlike pi or unlike any other number in existence, phi has these beautiful proportions. And one example is that phi squared is equal to phi plus 1. So if you're into numbers, Euler's identity, you'll realize it's plus 1, minus 1, the beauty of it. So... 2.618033398 is phi squared or phi plus 1. Phi minus 1, 0 0.618033398 is also equal to 1 divided by phi. So already here you see the beautiful expression of it. Now, uh, some, and you might stumble across sort of a debunker will say, well, you're rounding off because if you to type it in a calculator, you're going to get 99999. Well, then again, just like. Uh, Pi sort of seems to be acceptable. Well, if this is unacceptable, this um, fractions of a rounding, well, that's like 1 divided by 3 is 0 0.33333, yet that's um, perfectly acceptable again. Now, the reason why if you put it into a calculator, you get 99999, uh, as, well, that's because it's transcendental and no calcula no one has ever, ever, ever in the history of the uh, of, of humanity ever found the true value of pi. We round it off all the time. It's That's perfectly acceptable. And the same, what's good, good for the goose is good for the gander. And if we could express pi in its full form, um, it would work uh, to absolute perfection. So this thing of, oh, you're rounding off, that's an absolute nonsense. It's bollocks. Anyone who says it um, is talking through their rear end. But anyway, so phi is a beautiful uh, number. Uh, it's, it's okay now. Another example is uh, artists will will use it. Even uh, clever photographers will arrange their photos in phi or phi related proportions. And uh, another example that you might be most um, 
common, uh, familiar with would be this uh, Fibonacci uh, spiral and this is uh, for anyone who's into art or architecture you 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 must know this uh, if you don't know this you're really missing out on uh, something very very important but so okay with that so just as an intro to some of the um, important examples of uh, phi well yeah from the macro to the micro and sunflowers now it's beautiful in um, arithmetic and speaking of art and artistry well there's a some clues to even fire desi now there's a if you type into your search engine on youtube uh mathy magic land donald duck in in mathy magic land there you'll get to, to see this old cartoon and disney and other artists were using fi no they it, they tell you very, very clearly. So, uh, and also, well, here you can see how the Y on the Disney, but even the I on the Disney is a, well, it's a hidden reference to to Phi. So, um, but it's also in ancient architecture, back to ancient Greece, um, uh, Phidias, and but anyway. So, rather than a history of it, let's uh, look. So now we're going to um, have an. An examination of it and also sort of give you if you've never used a spreadsheet it's very um, the basic functions are very easy to use uh, don't be off put by it because it's a very uh, once you learn the basic tools of spreadsheet you can apply it to so many other things are uh, uh, an essential tool really and I mentioned the Fibonacci spiral and the Fibonacci numbers well such as in this uh, spiral here so we have 1, 1, 2, 3, then 5, 8, 13, 21, 34. These are the Fibonacci numbers, and when you draw it out geometrically, this is the spiral you get. But let's uh, have a look at it in terms of pure number. Now, to create the Fibonacci uh, series, we can just uh, start with 1 and 1. So you just type them in. I'm going to work uh, vertically. and. So rather than type out all those numbers, we can use the spreadsheet to uh, help us out. Now, to begin with, uh, whatever you want to do a, a formula, let's call it. Now, w w I want to create the Fibonacci sequence. And so 1 plus 1 equals 2, then 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5. Now, I could just type it out, but we don't, uh, using a spreadsheet, you can uh, really help you out. So... We begin with an equal sign. Always begin with an equal sign, and then it's like telling the computer we want to uh, create a formula. This is the basics also of uh, computer programming and apps. Uh, so if you uh, if you went like I went to school before the internet age and it really took off, so we didn't learn this. But uh, the younger generation will be learning this. But unfortunately, they won't be learning about fire because there's a. Uh, uh, there's no other way you to to put it. There's a cover up. Let's uh, put it that way now. Okay, let's but let's create the Fibonacci sequence. So we have one and one. I've I've put an equal sign in. So I've told the computer now we want to create a formula. And so if I click on the box above, I've already told it. Okay, so the box above now plus the box above that. So we've and then click enter. Okay, we we already have now the Fibonacci sequence now. Rather than type it out or re-enter it all again, you can just grab this little black box in the corner, a little, uh, and we drag it down. And there we have our Fibonacci numbers. Now I'll type in Fibonacci just so we keep clear. Okay, so there we have our Fibonacci sequence. And I'll delete this, and we'll just do it one more time just to. Okay, Fibonacci numbers. one and one and then beneath that we hit equals and then click on the box above plus the box above that okay there we have a fibonacci series now we're going to pull that down and now we can have a look at the uh, uh first level of file the golden number divine proportion in the fibonacci's and and we simply do that by dividing each fibonacci by the one well previous to it so that's one aspect of it so again we want to create a formula so we just push um, equals and now we're going to hit the box there so it's told us d7 now we're going to divide it by the previous Fibonacci 
and here we have the answer is one no surprise that's easy and we drag it down and we keep dragging it down until the end and well what do we have we have this um, same number appearing at this and what is that number that number is phi there we have it there so this is the number which uh, regulates all sorts of growth in nature but it's not just in the macro it's all, uh, micro it's also in the macro galaxies hurricanes it, it, it's it dominates all of nature now that's the number there and that's one way to get it is from these Fibonacci numbers how are we going for time okay now okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the whole column so at the top I've just clicked on E and we want to just get a few more uh, decimal points in there so and I've clicked on format so right click on the column format cells and I'm going to go to number here and there we have decimal places and so I'm going to increase that to 12 or 13 and he so now we get a better um, uh, more accurate version of it now this would go on for infinity to get a precise uh, uh, to get phi precisely is like trying to get pi precisely it's infinite it's not going to happen um, but anyway so already now we have uh, a good um, uh, account of phi there now on this other column I'm going to click on the column I'm going to drag this to give a bit more space and on this side I'm going to do the opposite of what we did on this column I'm going to divide the first num Fibonacci by the second so equals and then the first divided by the second and there we have one now drag it down and we have exactly the same thing happening but instead of I don't know I'll drag the whole box and what do we have we have phi minus one as I showed earlier we can uh, why is that special well 0 0.618 is phi minus 1 or 1 divided by phi so or you know that's one of the beauties only this number only the, in all of the infinite sea of numbers only this particular number operates in this way and that's another reason why phi is so special okay so all right let me pause for a moment okay so using the Fibonacci's we've got uh, the Fibonacci sequence here and we've used that to create Phi and also how it relates to Phi minus one so it's a nice thing about um, exploring it through this type of way now I showed earlier another really uh, beautiful thing about phi was this phi so phi squared equals phi plus one one divided by phi equals phi minus one so uh, and well phi squared so let's think about that's well squared it's two-dimensional if you want to put it that way so if we go to our um, spreadsheet again and I'm going to create uh, another column and again I'm just going to use the uh, Fibonacci numbers again and so we begin with one and we put in one again and then underneath we hit the equal sign we're going to create a formula we're going to tell it to add the two boxes above we get two and we again just uh, your cursor will uh, get into that box and so we have a Fibonacci sequence again now in our sacred architecture 55 144 and 377 are very important constants in uh, and across all the architecture now Chartres Cathedral up to the Sydney Harbour Bridge and so many uh, other places but uh, Phi is mostly connected to uh, the, the Greeks like Phidias but it's actually in the Great Pyramid and uh, I don't need to so, so much worry about these measures here what we have here is the proportions of Phi now 
uh, using these pure measurements, it's it's a slightly little bit off, but that's a, well. If you study the pyramid and you look at the um, the trollage of it, well, on it it has the accurate, super accurate fire proportions in there, but that's a longer story. But we have definitely have uh, fire in there, and and if you were to simplify this down, so 440 would be 11, and 280 would be 7. So we have a 7-11 ratio going on there but they have a great pyramid is uh, built around fire there's no doubt about it even in two dimensions and that's important because as we're going to see now and so we have our Fibonacci numbers in this column and I'll bring back up the fire spiral uh, Fibonacci spiral and the important thing about this is so we start with a little square there and the square is one by one so it has an area of one then you slowly start building up rectangles. The second rectangle is two by one. Then the third is three by two, and then three by five, then five by eight, eight by thirteen, etc. Now that's uh, important because what you start to do is create a series of uh, rectangles. And so here in the bottom corner we have the area of each rectangle. And as we go, so now it's fifteen. The next rectangle 40, 104, 273, 714, and onwards. So, and area is a two dimensions we're using two. So, previously we had a look at uh, the one dimensional proportions of it, and and so now just like in the uh, that spiral, we're going to calculate the area, and again, it's uh, using the uh, spreadsheet's very easy and so okay, I'll start actually on this square uh, delete now I'm going to start down there and equal sign and I'm going to tell the computer to multiply the second Fibonacci by the previous one so and there we have one so in this we can call this area okay and Again, just by dragging down, we're going to find all these. Uh, you don't need to worry about the numeration there. You can, but uh, so here we have the areas of the rectangle in this column. Now, just pull this out a little bit more, and just as we did earlier, we're going to have a comparison of proportions. So I click the equal sign, and then I'm going to divide the second of these areas by the previous, and Again, no surprise we get 2, but if we drag it down, what do we get? 2.618033. And that, of course, is the phi squared or phi plus 1. So it's uh, phi has, not just in the first dimension, it also applies across multiple dimensions and actually works in infinite dimensions. So out of a way cat now we go so let's explore that a little bit further and what I mean by that is so okay I'm going to start a new column uh, Fibonacci one down one okay hit equal sign and then we're going to add those the one above plus the one above that and again we get the Fibonacci sequence now okay, let's extend that out now I'll go back a little bit early because we've already found out what phi is so I'm going to get this I'm going to copy and we'll take it back across and so we have extend the column out a little bit so up here we have if I if I paste and if you see if I paste it in a little uh, box that says one two three that's going to paste the, the number that I've got rather than uh, if you paste it any other way you're going to you're going to pull up that formula again what what we want is just that number so now let's uh, make another column now in this one we're going to call it phi squared okay phi to the second power and well, we've already worked that out but let's do it just to show you how you can uh, create it so equal sign the formula I'm going to Phi times 
phi. So we're, we're squaring it. 2.61803 now. We can actually shrink this a little bit and so it all fits in nicer. Okay, so let's do it in another column. Okay, in this one I want phi cubed equals, so phi times phi times phi. Again, now there are shortcuts to this, but I just don't want to go too much into it if you're new to spreadsheets. And so we have phi cubed. Now I'm going to do the same thing again, so phi to the fourth. equals phi times phi times phi times phi and there we have phi cubed now one more time now we could go on for ever and ever doing this but just to just to prove my point so phi to the fifth power equal sign we create a formula and so we tell the computer multiply that by phi, by phi, multiply again, and multiply the fifth time, and we get phi cubed. Now, why is this important? Because, well, phi and and the Fibonacci is the best way to explore it, but not the only way. And I'll, if I've got, uh, I'll also show that at the end, but I just want to stick with the Fibonacci's for the moment. So, in Originally we used, so just to show again, uh, equals, what we did was divide one Fibonacci by the previous. And as we extended that down, we got phi emerging in the first dimension. Okay, but what happens now, okay, equals, so this time I'm going to divide uh, not by the previous, but by the third. So... Let's take a look. So what if I, um, so instead of, so okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide three by not the one above, not the two, but the, the box above it. So in this case, it's going to be, wait, so again, sorry, we click on on three. So I'm going to divide K12, divide by two Fibonacci's previous. Okay, what if I extend that down? Okay, that's what we get. We get phi squared, phi plus one. By skipping one, uh, so if we do the previous, we get phi. If we skip one, we get phi squared. So we, if that's the second, so what if I do the same? Equal sign, and I'm going to divide uh, three uh, previous. So the number five, I'm going to divide by one, two, three above that. Pardon me. So we click on five. And I'm going to say, so, and five being the fifth Fibonacci, and I'm going to divide it by the second, so f three previous to that. And what do we get? Again, we get phi cubed now. So if I divide it by the one previous, I get phi. If I divide it by two previous, I get phi squared. If I divide it by three previous, I get phi cubed. And just to prove the point again, now this could go on for infinity. So this time I'm going to divide 8 by 4. So we're going to go back 4. So divide by the four, fourth previous Fibonacci. And what do we get? We get 5 to the fourth power. Now you could do you could go on for infinity and by so thirteen divided by the five the fifth previous and we get phi to the fifth power. And that's another one of the beauties of, of phi. And do I have a so uh, as we can see here it's um and the further you go down, the closer and closer you, to get, you get. And this is one of the another uh, beautiful aspect of of the phi ratio. Now, 
really could go on forever. There's so many angles to explore, but uh, and I've been talking about the Fibonacci's. Now let's do something else, and so it's not just the Fibonacci sequence. So let's do the Lucas numbers, one and three. So this is how the Lucas numbers begin, and just like the Fibonacci sequence, we hit the equals, and then we're going to add the two previous values, and drag that down and there we have what are called the Lucas numbers. Now if we apply the exact same thing that we did with the Fibonacci, so we're going to divide 3 by the previous function, uh, previous value. Okay, no surprise we get 3, but if we drag it down, we see that even though they're separate, uh, there's a bigger gap between them, the ratio between, these six, uh, between the sequence will come back to phi again. Now if we did that uh, just like with the Fibonacci's, we do that on the uh, inverse of that, so equals, uh, where are we, okay, start that again, so we begin with uh, equals to tell, give a, create a formula, and we're going to divide the first by the second, and pull it down, and we're getting phi minus 1, or 1 divided by phi. So it's not just the Fibonacci's, it's also the Lucas. Now just to, you can test this further. So let's create a new column, uh, random. And I'm going to begin with 1 and a uh, random number. Uh, there's a barcode here, okay, 68. So the next value down would be 68. We just created a random sequence. Equals and 68 plus the previous. And now we've created a, just made up a, a sequence of numbers. But what happens again? So we're going to equal sign. We're going to divide 68 divided by 1. No surprise, that's 68. And if we drag it down, well, soon enough it comes back to this phi ratio, and the further you go down, the closer and closer it gets. This is the, one of the beauties of phi, and uh, using a spreadsheet you can explore this, and it's um, a really cool thing. thing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, have a good one, and the golden number, the divine proportion. It really is a thing. Uh, there's a, The gatekeepers will will tell you that it isn't, but if this isn't true, then neither is pi, and the whole world of mathematics falls apart. Anyway, have a good one.